So looking at the divorce law implication, because obviously in this case, uh, Peter and Winnie are, are um, they're not original Malaysian domiciliaries, um, they're residents of, of Malaysia. So we're looking at uh, the basis on which Malaysia court would exercise jurisdiction where we have visa residents. And then would the Malaysia court uh, enforce Hong Kong pre or post nuptial agreement? So um, based on which would a Malaysian court effectively exercise jurisdiction where we have a visa holder? How, how, would, we, how would we sort this one out? Uh, again, it, it sort of flows back to the original requirement of domicile. And uh, as I mentioned um, earlier, we, we do follow the English common law on the whole concept of domicile. So you have domicile of origin when you're, when you're born. And, and in the case of Malaysia, it, there's a specific provision that if you're a citizen, you're deemed to have a Malaysian domicile. And uh, you know, may, maybe to explain it in a non-legal way, uh, domicile is actually very different from nationality. It's, it's more the concept of a place where you consider to be your permanent home. Mm. So your, your domicile origin, if you're born in Malaysia as a citizen, of, would obviously be Malaysia. But then if you decide to uh, immigrate and set up a permanent home elsewhere, could very well be that you then shed your domicile origin and then pick up a domicile of choice, which could be you know, Australia or UK, going by the examples that we had talked about earlier this afternoon. Right. And um, there's also an, uh, another concept if you're a married woman, which is domicile dependency, whereby a, a married woman takes domicile of the husband. So, so, so that's just very briefly how, how domicile works. So in this case, it, it will depend very much on whether you know, the couple can show their intention to make Malaysia their permanent home to the extent that it, it's clear that um, they've established a domicile of choice in Malaysia. Right, right. Before, before the Malaysian Divorce Court will exercise jurisdiction. Right, right. And then if in the case that they do um, demonstrate that they have a, a domicile of choice in Malaysia and they've demonstrated enough um, sort of commitment to staying in Malaysia uh, permanently, um, would a Malaysian court entertain a effectively a Hong Kong nuptial arrangement in, in coming to um, exercise their discretion. We talked about this before in the context of a domestic couple, but given that the marriage was, let's say, celebrated and is originated in Hong Kong, would it, would it hold any sort of uh, more weight that it's a, a foreign marriage with respect to the, uh, the Malaysian court? I don't think it necessarily will. I think the Malaysian courts will still go by the laws in, in Malaysia, and, and in particular, the, the same act, the Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Act of 1976, and look at what the powers are given to the courts under that act. So the courts will have full discretion, but they are not bound to um, pay heed to or apply um, any pre or post nuptial agreements agreed between the parties. Right, right, okay. Okay, so looking at the um, Hong Kong uh, land, the property, whether the Malaysian Divorce Court may order division of a Hong Kong property, and whether the Hong Kong um, Court will recognize and enforce. So we did this in the context of the, the UK. UK. So we're, we're again uh, sort of looking at it um, extraterritorially. Um, uh, uh, any views on, uh, uh, insofar as a uh, Hong Kong uh, based property in Malaysian Court? from what you said previously on the UK side. Yeah, but I don't think there'll be any difference, uh, regardless of whether the property is in Hong Kong or UK. The, the concept would still be the same. And the, um, you know, it's, it's a, in actual fact, it will not have the, the effect that is, that is desired because it's extraterritorial. So it will still very much depend on the court in, in the jurisdiction of where the property is held, in this case, Hong Kong. I you think know, Hong Kong has this enforcement of um, foreign judgments and in that they, they, they do have a section where they will not enforce matrimonial related um, uh, uh, sort of orders. So I think that, that's pretty, pretty clear from their perspective that they probably would not entertain uh, yeah. money, uh, money related orders, particularly one um, stemming from divorce proceedings. 
Now, insofar as the, um, so whether a Malaysian divorce court would seek to set aside dispositions of assets into a Hong Kong trust, and whether a Malaysian divorce court would seek to redistribute the Laban company uh, shares, and whether a Malaysian divorce court would seek to set aside disposition of assets into a Singapore trust. So these are looking at, um, from a, uh, the, the sort of matrimonial causes perspective, whether or not um, sort of assets were put away uh, with the intention, presumably on the trusts, of um, uh, frustrating, in this case, let's say, Winnie's claims um, in the divorce proceedings. So I think from the Hong Kong and Singapore trust, would a Malaysian court seek to set aside those dispositions on an extraterritorial basis? I think the answer to that is, you know, technically they can, because under the um, section 102 that we mentioned earlier of the Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Act 1976, the powers are given to the court to do so in, in a divorce if they can see that uh, this was done in, in the preceding three years, the intention was to really deprive the spouse of a share of the property or to reduce the means for maintenance, then the court does have that power. But again, you know, the stumbling block is the fact that we're talking about assets which are outside the jurisdiction. Um, in, in this case, whether it's in a Hong Kong trust or a Singapore trust, the Malaysian court in, in actual fact will, will not have the powers to go across territory mm. to, to either Hong Kong or Singapore to have whatever order that they may um, give in the Malaysian court to be enforced. Yeah. So, that, so that's, the, that's, the, that's the main issue, that's the problem. Yes, and that, that's coming back to the nuptial settlement issue. Yeah. Right? standpoint they have the natural settlements but as I understand it Malaysia doesn't have within its matrimonial causes the same issue of natural settlements being subject to variation. Is yeah. that correct tonight? But surely they, they would be able to redistribute the Labuan company shares. Yes that one the answer to that is yes because um, the Labuan company is within Malaysia. Uh, Labuan is still part of, of Malaysia so the assets in the form of uh, shares in the Labuan company would be Malaysian assets that they can give an order to uh, redistribute in, in any way that the court deems fit and uh, it, it can be enforced in, in, in this situation. Right. Okay. 